All right, hello everyone. I'm Estevan. Welcome to the Bad Dog Agility Show. First, we're going to start off with the usual audio visual check. So if you can see my hands moving, if you can hear my voice, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. We have a 15, 20 second delay, and so we'll make sure everything is going okay before we get started. All right, we've got the thumbs up. I've got the green light from Sarah. So today, the problem. Have you ever run a course at a trial or in practice where you do part of the course and then the judge brings you back through that exact same part of the course but they ask you to do something just a little bit different? But because your dog's already been through it one time, they think they know exactly where they're going. They do the same thing and now you've gone off course. So this actually happened to me a year ago at the World Team Tryouts. And in two weeks, we're headed up to Connecticut to try out for the uh, uh, World Championship again for Team USA. And so this happened a year ago where I was bringing Get You Through. The first time they threttle, the second time they take a backside, and she did the threttle again, even though my cueing was um, very good and very different. So this is something that can happen to anybody. It happens a lot in practice. So that's the problem that we're going to address here in today's show. Now, what's the solution? Well, patterning in general is a really good thing. That's what we use to teach our dogs. We actually just did a podcast last week on muscle memory. And the most important part of muscle memory was getting lots of repetitions, doing that practice so that your dog can become very fluent in the skill and you can become fluent in skills like front crosses and rear crosses without thinking. But in this case, patterning is not a good thing. And the answer that we have for you is uh, something that we use called contrast training. And what that is, is we're gonna discriminate between two very similar situations for the dog. And there are three main benefits that we're looking at here. We're going to avoid patterning. So your dog, as you do things over and over again, they start to anticipate. And when they start to anticipate and they think they know what's gonna happen and they know where the reward's gonna be, they start to ignore your body a little bit. They ignore your cues. Maybe they're not listening to you quite as sharply as they were when they first started the exercises. Uh, secondly, we wanna solidify the dog's understanding. And contrast training can serve as a kind of spot check. Does my dog really know what's going on if I throw in the opposite maneuver? Third, you can train more efficiently. So you can use a single setup, but now you're doing several different things on that same setup. You, you're busy, I'm busy, everybody's busy. So if you can just do one course build, set it up and do a bunch of different things on it, you're gonna get a lot of efficiency and value out of your practices, especially when you're at home and you have to set up everything by yourself. All right, um, I think we have a video to show you. We are gonna show you actually that clip from tryouts and we've got another great video of Brittany just from last week, working her Sheltie Trek, again, on an international coursework. We're getting ready for this big competition coming up uh, where patterning kind of gets her. So take a look at the video. This is taken from round one of the World Team Trials for Team USA just this past year. This is Gitchy's one-off course for the weekend. And on the left, the judge, Thomas Traj, brings us through this course, and the first time through, he has us threaddle this jump here. So this is the jump of interest we're looking at. On this side, the second time through this part of the course, the dog has a slightly different angle of approach for this yellow jump. But the dog needs to go to the back side here. And so when you look at my body, I use these arm changes here. I've got the left arm up. That's my threadle cue. So I want the dog to come this way. And out here, the second time through, I have my right arm extended that means the dog should stay out and do this backside, but that's not what Gitchy does because she's got this strong patterning. She comes through the second time and she says, we've already done this part of the course, Dad. I know exactly what to do, and unfortunately, it's the wrong thing. And so this is the kind of situation we're trying to avoid here. So you can see that she comes through, and here she's gonna do the correct thing, which is a threadle. Again, you see my threadle arm, the left hand, and here again, you see the very strong right arm, which should keep her out. And I even move my body in toward that jump because I begin to sense that she is going to do this. And so here she comes in and she does take the throttle. And so this is an off course and eliminates us from this run. So Brittany and I were working on a tough course one day. And this part of the course, you take this jump and you have a choice. You can come to the backside this way, 
or the back side this way. So first, Brittany did it several times this way, and what happened was Trek quickly became patterned. So that after several times of doing that, when Brittany tried to push Trek around the other way, Trek went the wrong way. So we'll show you the, this is the way she went for most of them. So you see that Brittany is going to use a clear thread alarm to pull Trek off of that line. So the dog is on the line for this jump. Brittany has the left arm in front of her chest, which we can't see, but the dog sees, paired with her verbal cue, and that's going to take the dog off that jump. So now Trek does not take that jump, and now Trek is going to come around to the backside, which is correct. So now Brittany wants to move in and push to the backside, so she wants her dog to take this black jump and come this way. But let's take a look at what happens. Even though Brittany moves into the space, She's not using a thread alarm at all. If you look at her left arm, her left arm never comes up. Trek cuts behind her. And it's not just a matter of Trek misreading uh, blind cross or not blind cross. She's not just coming to the wrong body side. If she were, she would take the jump straight on. But look what Trek does. Trek goes all the way around and does exactly what she's been doing on the previous five or six repetitions. So that's a great example of a dog that has been patterned. All right, so now we're going to get to the demonstrations. And today we've got three very cool demos, three different dogs, and kind of three different skill levels. A very basic setup that I'm going to show you, a more intermediate advanced setup, and an advanced master's kind of international setup. Each of us are going to run a dog through this. Um, the other thing that we're doing that's kind of new today is we're putting together a cheat sheet for you that we're going to share with you at the end, but it's going to have the course maps of everything that we're doing here. So you can go ahead and set it up, do the exercises at home. Embedded in the cheat sheet are sample demo videos so that for reference, you don't have to come back and watch this whole 25 minute presentation. You can just watch the you know, 10, 15, 20 second clips of us doing those exercises right before you go out to the field and you do them yourself. So first, I'm going to start off with mine. It's a basic contrast between a backside and a wrap. So I'm going to come over here to this pink jump. Sarah's going to hold my dog over there. And, and the new skill that we're going to be teaching here is the backside. So let's say you're teaching your dog how to take a backside. I'm going to stand here by this wing, have my right arm extended. I'm going to look over my right shoulder, and I want my dog to take the backside. If I want my dog to wrap and come this way and take the jump, I'm going to look over my left shoulder this way. Now you can see between this and this, there's no difference in handler position. My position is exactly the same. There's no handler motion either. So the dog is going to learn that the difference here is my head and eyes, which way I'm looking over my shoulder, and which arm is extended. A lot of you, when you first start teaching backsides, even if you do this, the dog is going to cut behind you and take the jump. Because when they see this picture, that's what they're thinking. And so this is why you're going to teach this skill. And you can spot check it. So let's say I do one, two, three, four, five of these. Now on number six, I can turn over here and test and see if my dog is really following my arms or now they're patterned and they're going to cut behind me just like Trek did to Brittany the other day. So it can happen to very advanced dogs as well. So it's something that we always want to be aware of. Brittany, go ahead and let my dog out. Sarah's going to be my holder over here. And since we're always using toys with our dogs, I wanted you guys to see us doing some work with a clicker. Mirror! And food. And so when I'm using a holder, I like to click and treat as soon as the holder grabs her. And then I'm just going to come out into position here. I got my treats in my right hand. And I'm going to use her words. So it's two different verbal words. My word here is push. I'm going to say, push, 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 push. Click it. She comes over the bar. Treat her. And now when she looks at me and gives me that eye contact, I'm clicking her. And then when Sarah gets her hands on her, I'm going to click her again. So she's got an extra two treats. After that, I'm going to come back here and do another backside. I'm going to lead out, look over, push, push, push. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. And you see I've got her attention on me. And now, instead of doing the push, I'm going to switch here, see if we get the wrap. Mirror, 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 mirror. Very nice. Good girl. Good girl. Very good. And then I'll go back to the push. Push, 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 push. 
Very good. So we did four repetitions. Three of them were backsides. One of them was a wrap. Okay. And that served as our diagnostic. So we're going to go ahead and put Miri away. Go ahead and put her in there. And let me come back in front of the camera while Sarah gets the next dog ready. So for a beginning dog, the ratio is going to be much higher for whatever skill you're teaching. In this case, I'm teaching the backside. I want to do four, five, 10, 15 of those before I spot check it because we're really in the teaching phase. This is in your first 10 sessions of teaching a new skill. Once your dog's been doing this for like a year, two years, they're very advanced, your ratio is going to be more 50-50, one to one. So for every one thing you do on one side, in general, you want to do one on the other side, unless you're weak on one or the other. So the next thing we're going to see here is a tunnel discrimination. Very common trap. You're seeing it everywhere these days at all levels, even in some open classes, intermediate type classes. So we're going to jump 12 because of the, the ground conditions. Oh, okay. We had heavy storming rains earlier today. So we're just keeping the bars at 12. Grass is a little bit wet. Dog safety. We want to just focus here on the handling. Okay, so she sends Venture into the tunnel on the right arm. An important part and point of the contrast training is the first two jumps are the same. So to the dog, it looks like the same setup. Fantastic. That was a fantastic throttle. You see he's almost to the blue tunnel because he's only jumping 12 inches. He's just rocketing forward, but he has an excellent response to the threadle arm cue. Thank you, Sarah. Fantastic job. And we're going to put Venture away, and Brittany is going to get Trek, and she's going to do the uh, master's kind of international level uh, sequencing challenge. But with Venture, that was a really great example of how you saw him respond to the arm change. Sarah sends him into this end of the tunnel on one, and when she does this, he, nuts, he has to go to the other end of the tunnel. So that's a great example of contrast training. Very nice. So we're really focused on the green jump there, jump number three. And so there, Brittany kept track out with the right arm to do the backside of green. Very nice. And there, you see, we're not going to the backside of green. We're threadling to the front side of green and then going off to the, to the blue jump over there. Now she's going to do one more variation. And that's a tough one. You see that she actually comes in here. Let me walk you through for you. Thank you, Brittany. That was totally awesome. On all three of these, Brittany sets it up the same way. A nice, fast, straight line where Brittany has to stop right here, decelerate in order to avoid taking that off course trap over there. This deceleration that you guys just learned about last week creates a nice turn over here in this direction. But now the dog has a choice. The dog says, am I going here or am I going here? And that's where this contrast training comes into play. Brittany keeps the dog out with the right arm. That means come this way. Or she brings up this arm and says, come in. Now, different people will have different uh, handling maneuvers that they use based on their own handling system. But the point is that you're contrasting this for your dog. And not only did she do this side versus this side, once she got the dog taking this side, the throttle side, she had two additional options. I throttle the dog and I take them this way, which she did in her second one, or I throttle the dog and then turn the dog this way. So she added a rear cross. So this was a throttle rear cross combination. So this is probably the most advanced. Some of you are going to be at the level where you need to do what I did with Miria because your dogs don't know how to do backsides very well yet. So that's, that's perfect for you guys. Um, everyone should be working on tunnel discriminations. And um, for those of you who are advanced, looking at international skill, skill work, want to develop that skill set, you're going to do what Brittany does, uh, what Brittany did. And so we've got all of those demo videos for you in the cheat sheet, along with a summary, all the key points that we talked about here today.
Yes. Okay. So we're gonna bring Sarah over here, and she wants to say a couple of things. All right. I guess I'll just you stand to hand close to you. To you. Just, I'll, I'll just stand just really right close okay. to you like this. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that um, one thing that I really love about contrast training is that we're showing our dog this is what it looks like when I do this. This is what it looks like when I do that. And we're constantly giving them that contrast picture, and that lets them pick up on the differences in your body, in your verbal, and all of these things, and it helps solidify their understanding. So, you know, I like to think about the fact that for dogs, everything out here is, is they're taking notice of, and we don't want them to ever think that um, they're supposed to do something because they're heading for the fence or, or anything like that. So by giving them this um, back and forth contrast training, it eliminates all the other things that may be slightly different between one repetition and lets them really focus on the main difference and that's you and your handling. I think in practice, a lot of people, once they get something right, especially if they get it on the first try, they may not try something different. They may try the exact same thing again. In my mind, if you did it very well the first time, what's the point? Go ahead and change it up. Even for those of you who are at a more beginner, intermediate level, there's something else you can try. I would at least swap in, say, a rear cross for a front cross. But uh, definitely, especially when you're talking about backside, non-backside, you can just change up one obstacle, keep the beginning the same, make it a little more challenging for your dog, and make sure that they're following your cues. So that's your, that's your reward for being so great and getting it right on the first time not repeating and doing something that you already know. That goes back to this practice efficiency. You have limited time and it's more valuable for you to try something else. And I'll give you one other um, quick tip about contrast training and that is that choices, especially backside choices, are fantastic setups for practicing different maneuvers because with the same setup, just by choosing one choice versus the other, you're going to get to practice different handling for that setup. And you're also, I mean, you should be doing that anyway to time it. But even when you know that one way is faster than the other, by practicing all of the different combinations with that one setup, you get to try a lot of different handling. All right. Well. If there are no, no further questions. I don't think we have any questions. All right, the place you can go to for your cheat sheet is gonna be baddogagilia.com forward slash contrast, C-O-N-T-R-A-S-T. And I've just put it in the comments. And Sarah just put a link in the comments. So if you scroll down the comments, you will find a post from Sarah. It's got the link in there, click on it. It's gonna ask you for your email to get the PDF file, which should just pop right up. Uh, it's got links to the videos in there. Uh, don't worry if you've given us your email for other stuff. Just put your email in again. You will not get duplicate emails from us or anything like that. Okay? Uh, it's just to get the PDF file. So take the cheat sheet, uh, use it for your training, set it up. You've got the course maps there. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Remember, we go back, we keep looking at all the comments, even days or weeks later. So we will get to them, especially for those of you who weren't able to watch it live tonight and you're watching this currently on the replay. Uh, but until then, Happy training. Thank you for watching.